Okay, uh, <clears throat> we're going to look at um, plant adaptations in this video. Uh, there are three uh, classes of plants uh, based on how they uh, or what environments they live in in relation to water availability. Uh, so the three classes of plants are xerophytes, hydrophytes and mesophytes. In this video we're going to look at uh, xerophytes. Now these are plants that are or have adaptations that uh, reduce uh, water loss and they need them because they live in very dry uh, conditions. Uh, lots of people think they only live in dry hot conditions, that's not the case. Uh, you can get some plants with xerophytic features that live in cold conditions because water is locked up in ice or snow and is not available to the plant. So they don't have to be in hot conditions, just conditions where the water availability is uh, limited. So um, here are three examples of xerophytes. We've got the marum grass here. Um, which uh, has many xerophytic features that we're going to look at, uh, cacti, and then uh, the the pine uh, tree. Okay, so uh, there's three examples, and we're going to look at uh, various xerophytic features using these three plants. So there's the eight adaptations that we need to look at, um, and we're going to go through each one uh, in turn. Uh, the big thing about this topic is you need to be able to recognise xerophytic features from histology images of plants and also of drawings. So I've got a selection of both uh, to look at. OK, so let's go to uh, thick waxy cuticle and sunken stomata. OK, so as we can see, uh, this is a drawing obviously and um, we've got a thick waxy cuticle here so this is on the upper surface of the leaf and um, just underneath it is the epidermal cells so this is on the upper surface it's very very thick and um, what that does is that it reduces water loss by evaporation okay not transpiration because uh, transpiration is water loss from the stomata so uh, the thicker that waxy cuticle, the, uh, the, the less evaporation of water takes place. OK, next then is this sunken stomata. So you can see that the stomata is uh, sunken uh, down to the sort of epidermal layer here. So it's right deep inside the plant and uh, above it. Uh, is this air chamber. Okay, so often sunken stomata have uh, air chambers with them. So the idea here is that uh, this air chamber will um, retain some water vapour and uh, that water vapour will actually reduce the uh, water potential gradient or water diffusion gradient between the inside of the plant here and there. So between the inside and the outside you will have uh, a shallow uh, diffusion gradient and that will then reduce the amount of water that is leaving the stomata by uh, transpiration. OK, so that's a drawing of those two features. Here is a microscope uh, image of both. So on the left, we've got the air chamber there. And then we've got the sunken stomata there. And these white spaces here are the air spaces uh, within the leaf. OK, so that's a typical image of a sunken stomata uh, with the uh, air chamber. Now, on the right hand diagram, uh, you can clearly see now the thick cuticle there. There's the uh, epidermis and then deeper down, we've got the sunken stomata and obviously the uh, the air chamber there. OK. 
So that's your sunken stomata with uh, the air chamber. Now, some air chambers uh, will have hairs in them. So on the left, I've got a diagram here. Now the hairs, what they're able to do is they're able to trap more water vapour. So these red dots here are the water vapour. And uh, they accumulate more efficiently in the uh, in the air chamber. Okay. Now, the other feature of any air chamber really uh, is the the wind. Of course, uh, can be blowing this way, and uh, because the water vapor is actually inside the plant. The, the wind doesn't really blow the water vapour away. So uh, that's another good reason for a sunken stomata with the, uh, the air chamber. All the water vapour remains in that chamber. Okay. So on the right hand side we've got um, a microscope image there of the air chamber and the uh, sunken stomata. Okay, so that's the first uh, xerophytic features. Uh, next, then, um, this 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 feature is uh, seen in um, the marum grass. Uh, it's a rolled leaf. Um, so what we have here is a little bit unusual in that when the leaf rolls the the lower epidermis is on the outer side okay uh, that would have a thick waxy cuticle and there will be no stomata on there now normally the stomata are on the lower epidermis but in a marum grass they're not um, and that's because the the leaf rolls with the lower epidermis on the outside so inside there we've got a similar scenario to what we've just spoken about. We get the formation of an air chamber and we've got uh, hairs. So within that air chamber is going to be lots and lots of water vapour molecules. So again we've got sort of high humidity within this uh, air chamber and uh, again what it does is that it reduces the amount of uh, diffusion or transpiration out of the stomata of the uh, marum grass okay so um, all these hairs here are attached to the um, uh, upper epidermis and this bit here is the uh, vascular bundle there okay so that's your rolled leaf in the uh, marum grass Again, uh, with uh, marum grass, this um, is a typical xerophytic feature in that they have very deep root uh, systems, as you can see uh, in the diagram. And uh, what those root systems do is they're able to tap into water that's uh, found deep underground. Okay. Now, uh, very often as well with marum grass, you get these side branches on the roots. Um, and that uh, sort of knits the sand together because marum grass is found uh, on sand dunes. Uh, so that's that's one other additional feature in that uh, marum grass can actually produce these side branches on the roots that uh, hold the um, the sand together, makes the sand a little bit more stable. But the xerophytic feature there is the uh, the long uh, root systems. Next, then, uh, we're looking at the example of the pine tree. Now, uh, the leaves of the pine tree um, form uh, what we call spines or needles. Now, uh, they're, they're almost spherical, but not quite. It looks a bit like a, a D shape there. So this is the histology image of the pine leaf or leaf of the pinus plant and uh, you can see that it has a much reduced surface area and uh, that then will reduce the amount of water loss by uh, transpiration. Uh, it'll also have a thick uh, waxy cuticle 
and you've got the standard uh, sunken stomata uh, as well okay so um it, th this isn't a rolled leaf it's a leaf that's been formed into a spine that dramatically reduces the surface area and therefore will um, uh, preserve water okay uh, the next then is to look at plants that lose their leaves altogether or uh, some form spines as well uh, so we've got the cacti here um, the first cactus here is the um, prickly pear and uh, the leaves of the cactus here form spines uh, again very similar to the the pine plant in that they reduce the surface area over which water loss occurs so they'll also have reduced number of stomata there as well um, so the actual stem of the plant uh, which is this region here uh, that is what carries out photosynthesis so the spines here don't do photosynthesis it's actually the stem uh, of the cacti that does that okay so the next one underneath uh, this is when the cacti has lost its leaves altogether uh, so these that you see in here are the stems of the cacti and uh, there'll be very limited uh, stomata and uh, obviously a thick waxy cuticle again um, so two adaptations there that uh, reduce uh, water loss okay so the uh, the last uh, adaptation is uh, some plants can be classed as succulents and uh, these are plants that actually store water and uh, cacti do that uh, but I've put in here the aloe vera plant as, a, as an example of a succulent plant and you can see here um, the interior of the uh, stem okay this is the stem not a leaf um, is, is full of water okay so that is uh, a succulent uh, plant okay um, that's the end of the the xerophytic features so it's important that you're able to recognize the adaptations from drawings and microscope images uh, plenty of those uh, in the notes and obviously essential to look at some questions on this and see how they have examined uh, xerophytes Okay, so that's the end of this video.